Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to designing a driver circuit for a bipolar stepper motor. And this is going to be part one in a two part series. And this just focuses on bipolar stepper motors. This, you know, so if you have a unipolar six wire or eight wire motor, that's not going to be covered here. Okay. But if you have a four wire bipolar stepper motor that will be covered in this tutorial. And before we get started, check out forstronics.com to check out our different design, manufacturing and training services. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like what you see here. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what exactly will we cover in this video? First, we're gonna start out with how to design a driver circuit for a four wire bipolar stepper motor. And this will focus on the hardware of the driver circuit. So we'll also use an Arduino with some simple software to control it, but we're gonna focus a lot on the hardware itself. You may know this, there's plenty of ICs out there that are specially made to drive stepper motors, all stepper motors of, of different types. So why not just use one of those ICs? Why are we gonna design our own circuit from scratch? Well, the reason is, is those ICs are great. They're very flexible, they're built very well. The only issue is, they can be a little expensive. And if you're in a design that's not cost sensitive, who cares? But I recently got a project where I had to design a small driver circuit that was low cost because this, this person has very thin profit margins. So we wanted to really save costs on the driver circuit itself. So instead of paying over a dollar, and uh, you know, here's an example of a, of a TI driver I see where even in, at quantities of a thousand, they're, they're just under $2. Whereas if we just make it with some simple components, it's gonna be under 25 cents, possibly under 15 cents. But that depends on how high power of a motor you're using. So my application is a fairly low power motor, I should say. For higher power motors, you know, the components ought to be bigger so they'll go up in price. And as I mentioned, this will be a two part series and part one will focus on building the prototype and testing it and showing the code. And then in part two, we'll create a more finished PCB version and uh, test it and make some measurements on it. Okay, so let's talk about how the bipolar stepper motor is driven. So bipolar stepper motors have two main coils. Here's the, uh, the rotor, here's our coils. And the idea is this is just coiled up wire much like an inductor, and that's why it has the circuit symbol shape of an inductor. And the idea here is any electric motor from a high level works the same way. It basically uses electricity to create a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is varied some way to drive the motor. And a stepper motor, being an electric motor, works off that principle. And what happens here with the stepper motor is we have these two different windings and we're gonna use something called an H-bridge, which we'll talk about, two H-bridges, and what we'll do is shove current through one direction of the winding, and then through the same direction for the other winding, and then we'll reverse directions, and we'll do that a couple times, and that will cause the motor to do a full step. And here's more of a logic chart, but think of this as almost being power applied to what side of the coil, so A plus one, A minus zero, B plus one, B minus zero. So that means current's gonna flow from A plus to A minus and B plus to B minus. Then we reverse it on the A side, we keep it the same on the B, then next we reverse it on the B side. Uh, and then we go through these four different, uh, I'll call them steps, to do a full step of the motor. Now, there is ways to do half steps and things like that. I'm not gonna get into that in this tutorial. We're just gonna focus on steps. So we're going to build this H-bridge, these two different H-bridges to drive our bipolar stepper motor. And I will say, here's a color coding for four-wire um, stepper motors. My Most of the motors I've seen and the one I'm working with have the brown, orange, red, and yellow. So brown would be A, orange would be A minus, red would be B plus, and yellow would be B minus. Okay, and speaking of the H bridges, here they are. And so we're looking them at them in Eagle CAD software, and I'll talk more about the PCB in part two, but I just wanted to use these schematics to show you the circuit. So bridge A, H bridge A, and H bridge B, and it really doesn't matter which one is A or B, they're, they're essentially mirror images of themselves. So I'm gonna assume you have a basic understanding of diodes and MOSFETs, because that's used in these different bridges. And notice, so for each bridge, we have four different MOSFETs. And the gate of those MOSFETs, to turn them on and off like a switch, you know, high will turn this on, it'll act like a short, 
low will make it act like an open. And so we're gonna have these connected to digital pins on an Arduino board to turn them on and off. And notice connect con one, connector one, connector one. So these are connect, these two MOSFETs are connected to the same digital pin. Con two and con two, they're connected to the same digital pin. Con three and con four, so on and so forth. And then this PH1 and PH2 and PH3, PH4, this is where the windings are connected from the motor. So on H bridge one, let's say we would have A plus here, A minus here, B plus and B minus. And the way this works is if I make con one high and I make con two low, Q2 and Q3 are gonna be off. If I make con one high, Q1 will be on and Q4 will be on. Well notice the bottom of these are connected to ground and then the top of these are connected to VCC. So if Q1 is on, current will flow through this MOSFET into the winding, through the winding and back here, and then down through Q4 to ground. So I create a path for current to flow. Let's reverse it. If I make con one low and con two high, this is off, this is off. We get current flowing through Q3 into the other side of the coil or the winding into pH one and then through Q2 to ground. So I, by just flipping the digital pins, I can change the direction that the current will flow through the windings or I can stop it altogether. I can shut them all off. So that's the basic thing of how an H bridge works. An H bridge is used for other power electronics applications besides just motor driving. But uh, notice these diodes. So I have these protective protection diodes here. These are Schottky diodes. So they have a very low voltage drop. And these are here for protection. Motors, because they're very inductive, can store energy. And then sometimes that energy uh, needs to go somewhere. And so we don't want it to build up as a high voltage here on these lines. So if the potential here gets higher than VCC, these diodes, one of these diodes will turn on and current can flow. And just to, to make sure we don't get a high voltage here. And then for, if for some reason the voltage goes negative, more negative than ground, these will turn on and current will flow, keeping the voltage here what it should be. And then I also have a Zener diode connected to VCC. That way if VCC is driven too high, and for my example, I'm gonna use five volts, but you could use whatever you want for your setup. Then we'll have this turn on. This will turn on if the voltage gets above 5.4 volts and allow that current to flow to ground. So we definitely want some protections because we're dealing with motors which can store energy in a magnetic field and then it has to eventually be discharged somewhere and h bridge b is the the exact opposite i mean excuse me the exact same thing just repeated for the other set of windings these resistors right here are just for current limiting purposes and then as i'll talk about these different connections when we get to part two but just wanted to give you an overview of what an h bridge is Okay, we saw the, the initial layout for the PCB, but before I get the PCBs made, I wanted to do a test. You know, we want to test our concept before we spend money and time on the PCB. So what I did here is I grabbed some parts out of lab stock. Now, these won't necessarily be the parts I'm going to use on the PCB. I just wanted to check the theory of op to make sure there wasn't anything I was missing. And for this prototype setup, I don't even use the protection diodes. Just, just for this testing purposes, I don't need it. It's more just to verify the code and the theory of op of the hardware. So I'm using, uh, so we have two bridges, four MOSFETs each. I'm using the IRF 54, or I guess 540N, which is an N-channel MOSFET made by Infineon. And these are a little overkill. They're actually pretty high power for my application. Uh, when I do the PCB layout, I'll probably use the BSS 138s, which are much smaller, very low cost, very reliable, uh, but they're made for more lower power. This might actually be what you want to use if you're working with a more high power motor. Uh, I then have these 360 ohm resistors just to serve as current limiters for the gate. I have two breadboards, one for each H bridge. I'm using an Arduino Uno and they have a stepper motor library for Arduino, so it makes it real easy to control the motor. You can actually see the motor down here. So I just have a pretty small motor and we'll see it in action in a second. I have four wires, the brown, red, orange, and yellow, and one winding is connected to one H-bridge, the other connected to the other H-bridge. 
And then I also have an external power supply because I can't use the five volts off the Arduino Uno because it's not high enough current. Motors use a lot of current and they have a very dynamic current profile. So here's the connection from my power supply. And the idea here is even though this motor is tiny, it still uses on average around 200 milliamps. And actually it will spike, get some inrush current. It'll spike almost to 400 milliamps from five volts. So my warning here is if you're working with motors, they can be high current. So just make sure that the components that you're using, the wire traces on the wires or the traces on your PCB are all big enough to handle the power or the current draw of the motor. Okay, let's take a look at the motor in action. Okay, you can see the setup that we just saw in the picture. I'm gonna push play and I'm gonna zoom in on the motor because actually the circuit is running right now. So if you look closely at these gears, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus in a second. You can see the motor runs and takes a break for a second. And this is a real fine motor. And basically one step is a very fine movement. And that's just how this motor was designed. Very high resolution on this motor, but it doesn't turn very quick because it has all this gearing. But the whole idea is you can see it driving, the circuit is working. And then I pan over to the power supply because I wanna show you so I have this nice power supply. I've shown it in other videos. It acts almost like an oscilloscope where here's the voltage level, here's the current. And the idea here is I think each one of these is about, I should know this, is about a uh, hundred milliamps each division. So you can see we're spiking. I'm guessing this is inrush current, you know, somewhere around 300 and 400 milliamps. Okay. So that's just a quick video of it working. Let's take a look at the code. And now we're at the simplest part because I'm using the Arduino stepper library, which you can look up, you know, just search Arduino stepper library and you can look up and they'll talk about the different functions, but you basically create an object. You tell you what digital pins are controlling what, and it knows from the number of pins you put in, if you're using a bipolar four wire or something else. I set the number of steps to just 100. I set the rate to 60 RPM. And then I just loop around and I delay for a second. So that's why we would see the motor turn. It would delay, turn, delay, so on and so forth. But once again, just focusing on the hardware, this, this is just meant to prove that the circuit works. Very simple library in Arduino. Okay, and that's it for part one of designing a driver circuit for a bipolar stepper motor. And in part two, we'll, we'll take a closer look at the PCB and we'll actually test it. And for those of you who are watching my Ultimate Battery Circuit series, part three of that is coming soon. I'm just waiting for the parts and the boards to get in. Anyway, if you like what you saw here, please subscribe. If you have any tips or anything to add to the video, use the comment section below. Or if you have any questions, use the comment section below. Thank you for watching.